This is Henrik Altschuler that Roy mentioned earlier this morning. He was a Russian scientist in the 1950s. Um, he went to the library and was looking for books and instructions on how to invent and how to innovate. And he couldn't really find any, which made him very frustrated. And uh, as he grew up, he ended up writing letters to Stalin and telling him, you know, we're doing it all wrong. We really got to have some systematic way to do this. He bugged Stalin long enough that he finally invited him on down to give him his presentation. He gave him a presentation and threw him in jail. Okay, So he had some time to think about his game. And uh, when he got out, he actually got a grant from the Russian Navy to look at innovation and creativity and how to do it smarter. What they did is they looked at 300,000 technical patents over the years. 300,000 patents. And what they found is they fit into about 1,500 different categories of problems. And out of those 1,500 problems, there's really only 40 solutions. So that's what Roy was talking about this morning. Is it's pretty mind-boggling. You have these 300,000 patents, but can, all can be categorized into these 40 solutions. So why don't we use those 40 solutions as lenses when we look at a problem or an opportunity or how to make more money or how not to give money to your people in your family and look at it through that lens, that specific lens, because history has shown that's how we've invented. Does that make sense to you guys? So most people that teach this in the United States are PhDs, engineering PhDs. They teach it very, very boring. And what we try to do here at the academy and what I do when I teach this is try and make it fun and come up with a lot of examples that have to do with marketing, sales, personal issues, not just technical stuff. Because the lenses can apply to anything. What does R&D stand for? Research and develop. No, rob and duplicate. Okay. So he obviously stole that hairdo, right? <laughs> Say that jokingly, but there's research and development, but rob and duplicate is almost as true. There is no such thing as a purely, truly unique idea. It doesn't exist. It's always a con even if you're not conscious of that. It, or it has to be a combination of things that already exist or just haven't been applied, applied previously in the same manner. Or it's something somebody else told you about and you're not even conscious of it and you combined it with three other things. So when we look at lens taking out number two, uh, lens two is out of those 300,000 patents and a lot of the things that, as far as creativity is, you can make something better by taking something out of it. That's one of the basic 40 principles. Think about fiber optics for a minute. What is taken out of fiber optics? The actual machinery that makes the light. All you really want is the light at the very end of it for like surgery. Okay? So you've taken out all the machinery, I just want the light. A central vacuum system, remote compressors are the same. What's been taken out of a franchise, out of the whole franchise model? What's that? The risk has been taken out, individual ownership, the marketing's been taken out, the risk of the business model has been taken out. That's why franchises are so successful is we've taken out all that risk and the failures because we've already proven how a McDonald's works. Does that make sense? Airport? Yes. Yes. My name is Jim, and if, uh, hi, Jim. hi, if there's anything that you need, please, uh... I just love the smell of your limo, Jim. Oh, yeah, well, it's a new car. I love that new car smell. Yeah, I wish it was mine, but... Uh, it smells so good, Jim, it's leather. Yeah, yeah, leather. Great. Well, we're going to be at the airport in about, uh, 15 minutes. Looks like we're making good time. <laughs> a little frisky oh, back there, huh? <laughs> Nothing like a uh, Vegas night, huh? <laughs> Yes. Well, look, just tell me about the polo match. We'll be serving tea and crumpets around about um, 2 o'clock, okay? Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas commercials. What was taken out of that commercial to make it more effective and more interesting? What she actually was doing. Why is that really important? It's your imagination, exactly, and what is 
naughty for you is probably different than what's naughty, for, well, not, maybe not him, but her, okay? <laughs> right? So it allows the viewer to identify with that commercial better. There, another one in, the, in that series was a bunch of ladies sitting around the pool and they got a cell phone. And, oh my God, you didn't take a picture of that, did you? But they don't ever show you what the picture is. So that's done intentionally to make the commercial more interesting. Um, I interviewed these guys that made these commercials, this whole series, and talked to them about trees and trees and taking out lands, and of course, they'd never heard of it. Most people haven't heard of trees, and a lot of people that are naturally creative use one of the 40 principles. They just have never heard of trees before. That's just what they naturally do. Uh, Kerry Mullis, who has been um, to the academy here, he uses the other way around exclusively, and he had never heard of Triz before either, and he's already won one Nobel Prize from doing that. Okay. So taking out, how can you take something out to make it more interesting? Is that picture interesting? What's been taken out of it to make it more interesting? Yeah, what they're looking at, what's really going on, you don't know if that's a happy scene or a sad scene, right? How many photographers are in here? Okay. It's a, it's a concept, and Roy talks about a lot too, called frame line magnetism. How do you take something out of the frame of the image to make it more interesting? If you want to make a picture better, the simplest thing you can do is frame up your object, get ready to take the picture, go ahead and take it so you can compare the two, then look and see how far you are from the object, object and if it's possible, move twice as close and take a picture again and then compare the two in your personal photo albums. The second picture will be better because some of the information is missing and your brain wants to be teased. Um, the last commercial, another, another note on the uh, Vegas commercials. If you want to get an interview with somebody that you just can't get into the door, I mean, they're just not going to talk to you, you tell them that you're an author, you're writing a new book, and you've done a bunch of research, and for chapter seven, you've decided they're the best people in the world to interview for your chapter. That's how I got to talk to them. And it's not a lie, because everyone in here is writing a book, whether you know it or not. You may not ever publish it, but you might. You probably will. You tell them that. And if you're somewhat sincere, you'll get in the door and be able to talk to people. What's been taken out of that? Yeah, the rest of, how about that one? Yeah, we don't know if it's a cat or mama's coming back or the what, right? Black Hot Half Cup Coffee Room. Excuse me? Can I get a black coffee? Black coffee! Thank you, thank you. Where to go? Feed you on X, please. What? We gotta feed you on X, please. English. Got it. How does that make you feel? Oh, this is bollocks. What? That's disturbing, Ozzy. Make yourself heard with the full corded keyboard Samsung Propel. So what's been taken out of that, obviously? English. English, what Ozzy's even talking about, right? That commercial probably wouldn't work if most of the people watching it didn't know Ozzy was toasted, right? Because you got to have a hook there so you can make that relationship, or else it would just be, who, who is that guy? It doesn't make any sense to me. But because you have that hook, it now makes sense. Um, Ray Bard, who is uh, Roy's publisher, they're coming out with this book in January. I was talking to him last night again. It's a full plate diet book, and this is the cover of the book that uses this principle of taking out to make the book cover more interesting. You can't judge a book by its cover, but you will pick one up based on the cover, <coughs> right? So the cover has got to catch your attention. Most diet books, what do they look like as far as the image? What do they usually always have in them? <coughs> all the food, right? And it's usually the picture is taken straight vertically over the plate. Well, there's no food here. What else is weird about this picture? <coughs> Excuse me? The silverware, the knife is pointing outward, right? Font. And you're actually looking at it from where you, the viewpoint of where you'd be if you were sitting down getting ready to eat, not from directly over. 